A seven-year-long NASA mission is coming to an end with the largest ever sample of an asteroid collected in space set to land on Earth this morning. NASA's OSIRIS-REx was launched in 2016, its mission to collect space rocks from the asteroid Bannu. The spacecraft returned into Earth's orbit this morning and released a capsule carrying almost nine ounces of space rocks, believed to be about four and a half billion years old. NASA will be live streaming as the capsule enters the atmosphere with a projected landing in Utah at about 10.55 our time. It'll be in the desert there. Well, there is a Canadian connection to all this. Canada's OSIRIS-REx laser altimeter was able to map the surface of Bennu to understand the asteroid better and help identify a potential landing site. Joining me now is Michael Daly, professor of Earth and Space Science at York University, also the lead scientist on the OSIRIS-REx laser altimeter, altimeter, and he joins us now from Salt Lake City early in the morning there. Uh, thank you very much, Professor, for joining us. Okay, is this Christmas, your birthday, the birth of your first <laughs> child, your wedding day, or is it better than all of them? I'm not going to say it's better than my wedding day. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great day for us. I mean, we've been working on this mission from 2008, so it's kind of a long journey to get here. And uh, now we're, um, we're entering a new phase. We're, we're closing the, the space phase that, uh, you know, is, has been full of challenges that the team has gotten over. And we're looking forward to just getting past this uh, last final one and have a successful uh, sample delivered to the surface of the Earth for investigations in laboratories for many years to come. It really is quite, a, I mean, just the ability that you managed to grab some, a fair amount from this asteroid or from this comet. Uh, and then now you're, you're sending it back from 68,000 miles out in space. That's where this capsule was released. How do they figure that out, that it's going to land in the desert? Well, we have a navigation team that is uh, second to none. I mean, we've set the Guinness Book of World Records for smallest orbits around any object ever. And so, uh, you know, this is not my area, but I've worked with this team and, and they're, they're, there's no one better. So my understanding is the, you know, when we uh, plan these trajectories, we, there's some uncertainty about where, where things are going to land. And these are usually sort of um, ellipses that we uh, project onto the ground. And, and this one has been doing nothing but shrinking as the team gets a better and better understanding. So I... I it's just a great team to work with. And let's talk a little bit about the laser altimeter. How did that feel mm. when, you, when it was out there and you realized it was working, first of all? Because it's a bit of a crapshoot when you go up there. But it worked, and it worked wonderfully by the sounds of it. It worked really well. I mean, it wasn't completely smooth. The, the first data we got back from the asteroid, we got a lot fewer measurements than we expected. Because Bennu surprised us all the way along, and it was much rougher than we expected in this this. Uh, uh, interfered with our first measurements a little bit. We were still able to fulfill our our functions at that seven to eight kilometer range from Bennu. And then as we got closer and closer to Bennu, it just got better and better. And it was uh, successful beyond our dreams. So we we were really uh, able to contribute to the mission in a, in a great way. And we, we've done some astounding things together. And, and you mentioned that this will be uh, years of studying. What, uh, how will this be divvied up and what will people be looking for when, they're, when they start breaking this down? Sure, well, the, the divvy up is about uh, three quarters of the, well, 70% or so of the sample is actually going to be archived for, for future generations. I mean, our, our ways of doing analysis on these, our questions that we're asking, they will change. Uh, they will change as we get new instruments and new ways of actually doing measurements of samples. They'll change as we start learning more about the sample, and then that will mean we'll have different scientific questions that will ask, and that will provide uh, impetus for doing different measurements. So that 70% gets gets put away for, for uh, future scientists to look at. In terms of the rest of it, um, a uh, small fraction will go to the Japanese Space Agency. There's a, uh, some trade of samples between their sample return mission and this one. Uh, Canada gets 4%. This is our first uh, sample return, and that, that will get archived at the Canadian Space Agency. And then those of us that are on the science team that are participating in the, in the measurements will uh, be are integrated in with the analysis that has been promised to finish answering the 
scientific questions of Osiris Rex. All right. Well, Professor, thank you very much for joining us. I know you're heading there to uh, watch this and must be excited, but we appreciate you taking the time and talking thank, to us. Thank you very much.